Hello, I'm Steve from Jesus is Alive in America. Um, that's the reason why I changed the website is because he's alive in me. So anyhow, I want to share with you a vision that I had. It's an old vision. Um, I've already got it out once and put it on Facebook and I'm going to put it out again because there's a little bit of twist to it. But it's this, this is what I changed the title to. Only Jesus can make America great again. Had this vision two days after the election. And the Lord spoke to me and said it was concerning America and the election. So I felt led to get the, them out as, to get it out as soon as possible. I saw a flat outline of America. I saw a great wide canyon stretching from the west coast to the east coast, dividing the country in two. Then I saw Jesus standing at the edge of the canyon on the west coast. He was in the exact center at the top of the canyon. This kept going through my mind throughout the vision. Jesus at the center of everything we do. Then I saw seven long trees of life with no branches on them. Seven trees on each side of the canyon. Suddenly the trees formed a large circle end to end. One circle on each side of Jesus. He reached out grabbing the top tree of each circle one in each hand. He shook out the circles of trees and they formed a straight line end to end, each one completely covering each side of America. They were on each side of the canyon. Suddenly I saw branches forming on the trees of life. They grew from both sides of America out across the canyon to the top middle of the canyon. Then I saw a vine with brilliant green leaves intertwined in the branches, forming evenly spaced rows. The branches and vines grew together, forming a great bridge over the canyon. We do need to pray for our leaders, for sure, of course, absolutely, that they make the right godly, Holy Ghost, Jesus-filled decisions. But it's time for us to get our focus on Jesus and off the left and the right and all the other distractive thoughts trying to pollute, dilute, and distort our minds. The poison in, in this is the enemy of our soul wants to get into our minds so he can get into our hearts. I feel like it's time to share this. If you like this, you can, you know, if you like this video, share it with others. Um, you know, I'm going to end with this. I'm not trying to politicize it. I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm not trying to jump on the bandwagon of all the politics. Um, cause it's very messy, opinionated, just a lot of stuff. Some of it's rhetoric, just some of it's garbage, some of it's truth, but you know, it's kind of hard to find it all mixed up in there. But you know, I got like six really cool t-shirts, um, that I like. One says stand for the flag. Kneel for the cross. I like that one. I, I got a bunch of them. One's about journey, and they're just cool, godly t-shirts. I got a coffee cup, my most favorite coffee cup that I drink out of in the morning. It's got Ephesians 3, 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. This, guys, what I'm talking about, this, the enemy's trying to war with this in our minds by all this pollution going on all around us, on the television, the internet, billboards, whatever. Kids, cell phones, you know, you get robocalls. It's just all this distractive stuff. Because he wants to get into here. That's what he's doing with this political mess. Um, you know, pick one. Some call Trump a prophet. and He's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese. And others said he's a pathological liar that lied 8,000 times. You know? So, I'm sure the truth is somewhere in between there. That saying, but anyhow, um, so time to kind of get rid of, you know, I'm, like I said, I got cool t-shirts, cool coffee cups, but that's all it is. Time to kind of take your hat off, take your t-shirt off, take the sign down, because it isn't going to be us that makes America great again, or political decisions, or, you know, our military, or any of that stuff. It's going to take Jesus. That was God's ultimate plan. But anyhow, um, we got to get our minds on what's true and right and holy and acceptable and off the stuff. 
that's, you know, like I said, distracting our mind from what's really going on. So, anyhow, that's, sorry, I'm eating some cheese. But anyhow, um, love you guys. Uh, tune in. Uh, one of the scriptures I got today, seemingly by chance, but nothing's by chance. I was looking for another scripture, whole another scripture. But I turned to Ephesians 33. Just read that, guys. It's time for us, you know, his church to be a glorious church. Um, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. I actually got a book out entitled that. If you want a free copy of it, just email me at youngstromsteve at gmail.com. I'll send you a free copy. I'll trash your email. I'll trash your address. You won't get, I'm not going to ask you for any donations, nothing. I'll use it once. That's it. Just to get you the book. Or you can get it on Amazon. I put it on there. I put it on really cheap right now because it's in a rough draft. I got like 200 pages of it. Lots of scriptures because the Lord taught us what he told me to do. But I haven't finished it yet. I'm going to have it finished by the 29th of June. But if you want a rough draft copy, free. No strings attached. Just email me. It's called Jesus Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. And it's time for his people to shine. His bride. His true believers to stand up in amongst all the swirl and twirl and distractive, distortive, head-banging, vicious bashing, just a bunch of crap, guys. Really turn on the news and in 10 seconds you'll be mad. Pick a, pick a subject, pick a topic. You know, pick something. Right now it seems to be the swirl around all the political stuff, you know. Everybody's calling everybody liars and cheats and phonies and hypocrites and, you know, quick to slap labels on. That's a whole other message. But anyhow, guys, we love you. I'm going to end it with that. Um, talk to you real soon. Uh, this is a good short video. So anyhow, time to make America great again. Let Jesus back in. Last scripture. Go to Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That's the hard piece for America to get, guys. I'm an American too. We got an attitude, kind of, you know, honestly. We get it honestly, but we got an attitude. If if I go to Mexico or China or wherever and get arrested, even whether I did or didn't do it or whatever, get in some kind of political trouble or mess or get, you know, go to jail, where's my consulate? Call President Trump. Send in the Marines and Navy SEALs. We're, I want my phone call. You know, we think we're better than. And so it hasn't just, it's prevalent in the world all across it. Just talk to people about, you know, the abortion issue or homeless people or, you know, there's all these labels that people slap on, th on things. Do you, do you even know their story most of the times? No. So... We just, and it's, it hadn't crept into the church. It's prevalent in the church, too. Unfortunately, a lot of the American cultural churches are egotistical businesses or power stations or whatever. It's just some kind of trip, power trip that's not even of God, not even reading your Bible. I'll end with this one, I promise. Go read Matthew 20. You could be the doorkeeper at the church or been a pastor that saved for 50 years and reached millions or supposed millions or whatever. Sometimes it's just gloating, egotistical, numbering stuff and part of the power trip, but maybe not. But the Bible says we're all the same. Faith is all the same when he sent us out in the field, in the harvest field, to labor. Same. Paid everybody the same, guys. And then when people that worked all day thought they'd get more, better than, a little bit of better than mentality, got to Jesus and they copped an attitude. And he's like, where's the evil in your heart? How did, um, I'm not doing any wrong. You agreed to work for this. Mind to give what it's mine to give. So, you know, there was a post on Facebook, which I made copies of, um, 
about the thief. All he asked was, remember me. And Jesus said, I, this day you'll be with me in heaven. Well, he was dying, just like Jesus. Not going to be able to go to church, the next church service or event or, you know, probably barely not even going to really get to repent. Maybe some, a little bit, because he's laying there dying. But I mean, he's not going to be able to right any wrongs or, you know, some of the mental gymnastics that, that the church has, that self-help, garbage, pretty much. But, you know, it, it, not going to be able to do anything. Really? Churchy, church church worldwide-wise, you know, are what we think is Christianity. But yet God accepted him into the kingdom. So his value system is completely different than ours. It's across the board. When you read Ezekiel, it's in there. You know, we're supposed to warn people, the righteous, to not, you know, the to not so they don't perish. But it also says that he didn't, that's not his goal. He didn't want to destroy anybody. He didn't want to see anybody die and go to hell. It's the opposite. So just because we're telling the truth, telling people to turn and repent, change their ways, whether they're in church or not in church, you know? So anyhow, but that's part of the humble piece, you know? It's just like, man, God, we just need to turn it over to him, surrender to him, surrender this country to him. What are you telling me to do, God? Quit, you know, all these vain debates and just, you know, do something about it. What's he telling you to do or be? Even if it's just pray for somebody or, you know, get involved in the decision-making process and and actually change things, but change it from a Holy Ghost perspective. Why well, I said as a lead guide direct you to all truths. So anyhow, that's my message. Um, Jesus at the center. Let's get him back in this country, guys, and make America great again. I want to live in a godly nation, but, you know, um, a little bit deeper than that, but look this up. What's the scripture inscribed on the Liberty Bell 236 years ago? Uh, uh, that's, that's my homework for you guys. Go look it up. Google it. What's the scripture written on the Liberty Bell? A lot more to it than that. I'm not going to go into it. It's a direction the Lord's taking me, but... So anyhow, we love you guys. Talk to you all real soon. Have a great day. Please share some of my videos. Comment, likes, dislikes. You know, I'm just, I want to hear from you guys, please. You know, got something to say. I'll take the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't care, really, honestly. I just want to open it up. So please share these videos with others if you like them. Tune into us at Facebook, Steve Youngstrom or Terry Youngstrom, my wife. Uh, you know, you can friend us if you want. We'll probably friend you back. Just love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.